Welcome! I'm Michelle Anderson, the founder of Clarinet Mentors, and today I have a video for you on a practice technique or tool that you can use to really help improve the tone and flexibility on your extreme high notes on clarinet. So I'm thinking of your altissimo register, kind of the notes above high C, mostly in the range of the C sharp up to about an E or so. Many of our pieces of music have that, and often we find those notes are resistant to come out, or they sound a bit shrill, or we have problems with intonation. So this is one approach to help make those notes feel more comfortable and feel easier. And I should just say, if you're a more beginning player, you might not be playing these notes yet, you can adapt this technique, but I'll also let you know I have a great set of free videos at www.masteringclarinethighnotes.com that you can sign up for that will give you some techniques that are probably more applicable to you right now. Okay, into our exercise here. Um, one of the challenges we have when we play high notes is that they do sometimes take a little bit more pressure on the reed. Or, I should say, when we're going for extreme altissimo, sometimes they work better if we imagine our bottom jaw pushing down into the reed a little bit. There's an exercise you can do to experiment with this, which is simply to finger a low C, and just by imagining your jaw is coming down lower on the reed, you try and hit a series of overtones to get a feel for what it feels like when our jaw is doing that. Let me demonstrate that. So I'm playing low C. Without moving my fingers, I'm going to see if I can get a series of higher notes. So that was just using my jaw. And that exercise is one exercise that really helps get our mouth feeling what it's like to play those high notes. When you first try this, if you've never done it, it can feel quite tricky. So as a practice suggestion, you might add your register key just to help you out, and then once that note's established, slip your thumb off the register key. Now, that's actually not the main exercise I want to show you today, but that is a good one. That helps us get a feel for how much extra jaw pressure we need. However, I think the main challenge a lot of us have when we try our altissimo is we inadvertently bite down on the reed too much. We're either biting too close to the tip, so we're closing the reed off a bit and restricting its vibration, or we just have too much tension overall. We, we want nice, fast air pressure, but we want our shoulders, our arms, our throat to be quite open and relaxed when we're playing clarinet in general. And it will affect the high notes if there's a lot of tension there. So, an exercise that really helps us to release too much tension is to take a passage that has some altissimal notes and try it with a double lip embouchure. Now, basically, double lip embouchure is where we not only have our bottom lip covering our bottom teeth, we have our top lip covering our top lip, top teeth, I should say. You may already play double lip embouchure. I would say about 90% of people play with their top teeth on the mouthpiece. If you play double lip, you're already ahead of the game as far as this exercise goes, but maybe there's some refinements here I can put in. If you don't play double lip, we curl our top lip over our top teeth and we're going to play, really you can play any series of altissimo notes. Just for convenience, I picked a little workout here for you. I'll verbally say it, but you can also download a worksheet. Just look in the write-up below this video and you'll see uh, a place to download a PDF that has it written out and that would be a handy tool for you to have. So. You take a pattern, I happen to have one written out here for us, and we go double lip, and what happens when we try playing altissimo notes double lip, especially if we're not used to it, if it, it really hurts to bite. Our top lip is quite sensitive, and if we're putting too much pressure, it won't feel good, so our instinctive reaction is to open up a bit, which generally is a good thing for an exercise. You may not sound good on double lip embouchure for this exercise, and even if you don't sound great, it's still an effective exercise. So let me show you why. Um, in the exercise we have here, it's excerpted from my Mastering Clarinet's High Notes course. You'll see the first line has W13, W14, W15. The first exercise is basically going from our high C, slurring to the D above it. Just one note up, um, slurring as we go up. T -ya, t -ya. And that's a relatively easy slur. 
doing it double lip, the first time you try it, you might find your tone is very unfocused. Let me demonstrate what it might be. It might just feel like nothing's coming out. You get an undertone, it's flat, it's squawky. This often happens. If it does, um, you're on the right track, believe it or not, because you're no longer relying on a lot of jaw pressure to support this note, which sometimes we do to the detriment of our sound and our resonance and our dynamic control. Now, we've taken away the jaw pressure and you need to replace it with breath support, with air support, which means really focusing on keeping a really fast air stream there. So if I were to try even just the high C, double lip embouchure, um, and I get that undertone, just focus on changing my air to a faster, more whooshy sound, it's going to clear up a lot of that. So, double lip. That was me kind of starting with wimpy air, and it just wasn't working, so then I reset it a little faster, worked better, and then I made my air even faster until it started to come out feeling fairly normal. Now, when we have our jaw more open, um, sometimes our brain gets tricked into thinking we're saying oh or ah, which has our jaw being more open, and it will cause our tongue to drop accordingly. If our tongue's sitting low in our mouth, the high notes aren't going to sound so focused. So, not to give you too much to think about, but while you're doing double lip, and while you're thinking about fast air, it is important that you also think about having your tongue sit high in your mouth, as if you're saying he, if this was an x-ray, it's raising our tongue up, arching it near the roof of our mouth, he. So if I added that he to the double lip embouchure and fast air, my C is going to sound pretty good. Now again, I'm experimenting with an unfamiliar feel, so you notice I got a little squeak at the beginning of that. That's pretty common too. Squeaking is an indication that we're biting a bit, so when I initially put my air through, my jaw probably tightened down and, and we want to train ourselves out of that. Alright, the first exercise, as I said, is slurring between C and D, and we want to try that with the double lip embouchure. Even if it feels really unstable, um, the skills it kind of forces us to do, which is to use faster air, to have our tongue be in a really good position, serve us really well, and when we go back to our normal embouchure, it's almost like we've developed all these good habits and we just add them to on top of the skills we already had. It usually makes it much better. So I'll demonstrate that. I'll, I'll try it double lip and um, I'm going to do it the way it commonly would feel if it is a little unstable to people at first. So you might hear some instability, which is what I see most people having when they first try it out. So that improved as I went because I experimented with increasing my airspeed and getting my tongue a bit more consistent. Now, um, if we're doing it from a C, it can be helpful to wear a neck strap, which I often wear. I'm not wearing one at the moment. But with double lip embouchure and playing a high C, there's not much anchoring our clarinet. Or, you can't see this the way my camera is, you can just anchor your bell on your knee um, to help you have more stability with the instrument. That can be helpful for this exercise. The next measure is taking the C to an altissimo E. So we're going higher. Same idea, double lip embouchure. So you can tell each one of those got better. The first one, the high E, wimped out a little bit. And that's super common when we first start working with this exercise. Then I built my air up a bit more, and then I built my air up more. So it's a training exercise. And remember what I said earlier. So actually, some of you are going to try this double lip, and you're going to sound amazing right away. And that's great. It's just another tool in your toolbox. For many of you, it's going to feel challenging. You're not going to sound good. But I encourage you just to work with it for about three or four minutes. This is not meant to be done for a long, long time. For one thing, if you're not used to double lip, it might get quite sore. So it's a short exercise. 
but I encourage you to do it regularly for two weeks. But just set a time limit where you're going to try it. What I would do is work on one measure, double lip, until I sound as good as I can get it to sound. Then, if you're used to playing with your teeth on the mouthpiece, go back to having your teeth there and just try it with that same feel. So what would this look like? Let me play um, the one I just did, C to E. I'll do a few of those intervals, then I'll pause and then put my teeth on. So again, at first it might feel a little challenging. That's starting to feel better. Now I'll put my teeth on. Now what I experience immediately, because I'm used to having my teeth on, it feels more comfortable, but the note comes out with so much more ease than what might normally feel ordinary for me. It really has rounded out my embouchure, opened it up, increased my air support, and all of these things make those high notes work a lot better. I've used this with a few students in the last week, and they've told me it's made such a remarkable difference. That's what really encouraged me to make this video today, because I've seen it make a dramatic difference to people. So I encourage you to try it out. If you do download the workshop and the, and the worksheet that's in the link below, um, I just took a couple excerpts of famous clarinet pieces that have leaps up into the altissimo, and you could take those short excerpts. There's Weber Grand Duo Concertant, a Brahms Clarinet Sonata, the Weber Concerto Number no. Two. They all just they're all like four to six bars long. You can do that, trying them double lip and then trying them regularly. So we have some simple exercises that you can do where you're not focusing so much on the music. And then we have some other excerpts that I encourage you to try this way. It's just another tool to train your body to use good air support, use proper embouchure, and it makes it easier to play, which is the bottom line, which is what I want for you. So thank you for watching today's video. If you want more High Notes videos, go to MasteringClarinetHighNotes.com. I have a whole series of free videos that I'll send to you that show you all kinds of little tricks and techniques to make them feel easier. And if you're not a member of the Clarinet Mentors community, please join. It's absolutely free. Go to LearnClarinetNow.com and about once a month I send out a newsletter with an educational video like today's. Also some of my pointers on clarinet equipment, clarinet music, maybe clarinet recordings that I like that I think you will find helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on our next video.